Hey friends. Today I am going to explain a Japanese action horror film called Tag. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Two buses of schoolgirls are driving down a highway through the woods. Everyone engages in cheerful conversations while a loner named Mitsuko writes a poem. Her friends ask her to let go of the notebook for once and enjoy the world outside of it. Mitsuko bends down to pick up her pen when a gust of wind attacks the school buses and slices through them, bisecting everyone else on board. When Mitsuko looks up, the bus has no roof and her friends are missing the upper halves of their bodies. Moments later, a second gust of wind attacks, but Mitsuko ducks just in time to avoid being killed. Like her friends. When the bus stops, she gets off and runs down the highway through the upper halves of the people who died. A group of four girls is walking in front of her. She pushes one of them to the ground, saving her life as the other girls suffer the same fate. But only a moment later, the girl dies trying to save a bunch of cyclers. Being left alone again, Mitsuko runs as far as she can and reaches a river. Several dead bodies of schoolgirls have been washed up to the bank. She cleans her face and changes into a clean uniform before wandering around the highway again. After hours and hours of walking aimlessly, she reaches an all-girls school. Strangely enough, the uniform she changed into matches the uniform of the school. The girls seem to recognize her. Mitsuko doesn't ask them anything or tell them about the mass. Killing that happened earlier. She is too stunned to react. Suddenly, her girlfriend Aki approaches her. They have not seen each other for some time but Aki claims that they have always been going to the same school. When a gust of wind hits them, Mitsuko panics and falls to the ground. But the wind does no harm this time. Aki picks her up and walks her to the school. Mitsuko is beyond confused but she rationalizes the events of the morning as a lucid dream. She believes Aki when she says that they have always gone to this particular school. When alone in a classroom, Mitsuko tells Aki about the wind that killed all of her school friends. And starts to hyperventilate. To help her, Aki brings her to the window, showing her that the wind is absolutely safe. Mitsuko reaches her hand out and calms down after feeling it. The couple smiles at each other thinking of the absurdity of the situation. Aki assumes that Mitsuko has some case of amnesia but laughs it off. Following that, the couple meets their group of friends and decides to skip class for the day. The four of them run to the woods while laughing and playing around. Mitsuko's mental state is the complete opposite of what it was a few hours ago. She forgets everything about her past life, dismissing it as a dream. The group stops to catch a breath on reaching a river's bank. Aki and Mitsuko look at each other and fall deeper. In love. Mitsuko then tells the other girls about her dream. One of them thinks that she must have entered a parallel universe sometime this morning but the others assume she is only bluffing. Then, they notice a mattress on the ground nearby and use the pillow to fight playfully. As the feathers fly all around, the girls look at each other in admiration. Mitsuko notices a lesbian couple standing nearby, watching them with a smile. The mattress and pillows must have belonged to them, but they disappear before Mitsuko can inquire. A girl comments that if they want their reality to change, they must do something unexpected and out of the ordinary. She follows by flashing her underwear to them as the girls laugh. Her words seem to be of high importance to Mitsuko as she thinks about them deeply. A while later, the girls return to the school. Mitsuko and Aki are in the classroom when Mitsuko notices a pillow on the floor. As she picks it up, the teacher starts firing at them with a machine gun. Everyone, including Aki, is killed in the incident except for Mitsuko. The teacher says this is the punishment for them skipping classes. She 
is about to kill Mitsuko as well, but the two of her other friends come to her rescue and help her. Escape. They are also killed in the process, but before dying, the girl from earlier tells Mitsuko to go wild if the situation calls for it. Mitsuko and the remaining girls run outside the school while still being fired at by the teachers. Most of them die, but somehow, five of the girls make it outside. Suddenly, the deadly gust of wind kills the others, leaving Mitsuko alone yet again. Before dying, the girls tell Mitsuko that it is all up to her now. While being followed by the wind, Mitsuko runs for several minutes before reaching a town. With people. A crowd of people is walking down the street but she pushes them aside. And continues running. She only stops on reaching a police station and meeting a lady officer. The. Officer initially thinks Mitsuko is a maniac because she refuses to speak and only points in a direction. But suddenly, the cop calls her Keiko. When Mitsuko looks into a mirror, she is shocked to see that she has turned into an entirely different person. The cop turns out to be Keiko's friend Tomoko who is excited about Keiko's wedding happening in a few hours. Keiko, who was a different person only seconds ago, is confused out of her mind. She cannot think straight and allows Tomoko to do whatever she wants. They get into a car to the chapel where she is getting married. The morning has been a roller coaster ride for her, but it only gets wilder when a bunch of women follow their car as if Keiko is a celebrity. They all express how excited they are about the wedding. At the chapel, many other women surround and welcome her. On reaching the changing room, she is shocked to see Aki getting ready for the wedding. She can almost not believe her eyes as her mind goes blank. She tries asking her what is going on but Aki secretly whispers to her to keep quiet for a while. She also promises to explain everything later, revealing that she knows something that Keiko doesn't. Following that, Keiko is dressed up in a wedding gown as the girls gush about how handsome the bridegroom is. Keiko suddenly realizes that she cannot marry a man when she is in love with Aki. Aki notices her panicking and makes the other girls leave the room for some privacy. When they are alone, she calls Keiko by her real name and urges her to do as told. Keiko still doesn't know what is going on but she trusts Aki enough to do what she says. After she gets ready, a group of girls comes inside the room to invite her to the chapel. Aki attacks them and kills them all to teach Keiko how to fight. Before sending her to the aisle, she hands Keiko a broken glass to attack anyone who makes her feel uncomfortable. Keiko walks down the aisle with the glass instead of flowers. The guests, who are all girls, clap and cheer for her. On the other end of the aisle is an upright coffin that consists of her groom. Suddenly, the guests start making inappropriate gestures and taking their clothes off. They mock Keiko and push her to the coffin. When it opens, it is revealed that her future husband is a disgusting creature with a pig's head and a man's body. The crowd forces her to kiss him. But instead, Keiko uses the glass to stab him. In a fit of rage, she also kills some of the girls around her. Aki comes in at the right time to save her but they are stopped by a duo of teachers from the previous school. They fight the duo and manage to run outside the church. Aki gets busy distracting the teachers while Keiko continues running until she is stopped by a girl in a tracksuit. The girl calls her Azumi and invites her to the marathon. Keiko gets a look at her face in a mirror and is surprised to see that she has yet again transformed into someone else. She is now Azumi, a star marathon runner who everyone is fond of. A massive crowd cheers for her as she runs alongside her friends. Her friends reveal that she has always been a good runner ever since middle school. Izumi has no clue what they are talking about but by now, she doesn't even want to know the answers. Soon, she starts to enjoy herself and sees that her friends from school are running. Alongside her. But then, the pig groom and the teachers start to chase her behind. The 
girls ask Azumi to be brave because she is the only one who can escape this 